So that's what I do. I push everybody around me to be great. Even like my security team, I say, listen, while y'all working with me, y'all built your own security team on the side. Right. It's freaking smart, man. How many of you right now are working for a boss, a company, a corporation, where they're not allowing to have your own side gig? And why not? You can't have any outside interest? Well, Matt, you don't understand. It's a conflict of interest. Conflict of interest to who? Between you and your boss, who's the most important part of that variable in that equation? It's you, not your boss. And if you don't have a boss that empowers you to be great, then man, you got a boss that's empowered you to give up on your dreams, to give up on your goals for the exchange of a salary. Is that the type of life you want to live? And yet you want to raise kids. You can be anything, Poppy. You can do anything. Mommy, you can be anything. Be what you want to be. Yeah, but mom and dad, they're not living to be anything themselves. You, mom and dad, turned off the dream machine. You, grandma, grandpa, turned off the dream machine. You cannot expect you to teach the next generation, say, hey, go out and live your dreams and fly, baby, fly. Unless you're flying. Kids don't listen to what you say. They watch and do what you do. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And we have another reaction video for you here. This time is Floyd Money Mayweather. Uh, there was a transition from pretty boy Floyd to now Floyd Money Mayweather. So uh, apparently my team said, Matt, you got to check out this video here. I'm a million dollars worth of game where we got uh, Wallow and uh, Gillian interviewing apparently uh, Floyd Mayweather and uh, some things that stuck out to my team that they want me to react on based on his jewelry, uh, how he built a team and how he worked extremely hard by having a undefeated record in boxing as well as Probably right now, one of the greatest promoters in boxing uh, that exists. This guy knows the game in and out. Not only knows the sport, but how to make money in his sport. Respect to the man who became a student of his own business, his own craft, and financially successful. So let's take a look at this video here with Floyd Money Mayweather on Million Dollars Worth of Game interview. So Floyd, man, like you got everything. You got the skyscrapers. You <laughs> got the cars. You got the houses. You got what's next? Um... What I'm working on now. Uh Jeez, look at that ice on his neck, man. <laughs> look at that. Look at his wrist. Okay. It just looks like a lot of money, man. By the way, I love it. I love it. I mean, you look at a guy like that, wearing, wearing this type of jewelry, his appearance, does that off put you or does that inspire you? I want to know, put it in the comment section below. If somebody's wearing clothes and jewelry, does that off put you or does that, un does that inspire you? For me, it inspires, but I want to know what you think. I don't really want for nothing. <laughs> I don't really want for nothing. I mean, it's crazy that, I mean, when people say, oh, you, when you post something, you see all the, all the comments, you see what people were saying? That. Said, that fucking, well, how much is that watch, man? I got to ask, man. Oh, that one? <laughs> it's, 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 uh, Gilly couldn't take his eyes off this thing. All right, Floyd, how much is it? Huh? Oh, that's 18 million. Ah! 18 million? 18 million? Oh, you yeah, know. Get the camera, get that. 18, 18 million, million dollar camera, watch. Pull it on this shit. Oh, no. If, if you had the money and you can drop $18 million and it's nothing to you and buying an $18 million watch like a 25-cent cheeseburger at McDonald's, would you do it? I'm just curious. Would you, if you had all the money, I'm just curious, would you do it? Put it in the comment section below. You know, on the watch, man. Ah, damn. That is life on your wrist. True. Many people's life... Many people's lifelong earnings and whatever they made in their entire lifetime, multiple lifetimes, multiple lifetimes is on his wrist right now. Perspective. You know, you do an interview with this and you realize your life ain't going as good as you <laughs> thought it was. <laughs> All the more. I'm sitting over here with my little $40,000 joint on. He 18 million. Yeah. Sit on this motherfucker for the rest of the day. By the way, man, there's always going to be somebody more handsomer than you, more beautiful than you ladies. Uh, there's going to be somebody more richer, stronger, leaner. Somebody's got better six pack abs, whatever the case may be. But here's the thing, man. You know, I was telling this to my wife. I said, babe, there's always going to be somebody more handsomer than your husband. There's somebody going to be more richer than your husband. There's going to be more prettier than you. There's going to be more hotter than you. But I choose you to love. I choose you to love. If in spite of the other opportunities that may come my way, I choose you to love. Because for me, I treasure a wife. You know, Proverbs talks about a wife is favor from the Lord. It's a good thing to have one wife. And uh, listen, at this point, um, I'm done comparing. And I hope that many of you are done comparing too as well. Well, you know, Wallow and Gilly here, they're, they're probably comparing. And they're, 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 I got a $40,000 watch, you got an $18 million watch. 
but it's, it's funny, but at the same time too as well, if you're constantly comparing yourself to other, to, to other people, you're constantly trying to keep up with the Joneses, that's one fast way to go broke. 18 million. God 18 damn. million. Hey, <laughs> that mother do look like a chandelier though. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That mother, and how much was the damn necklace? Because they're going to be about 25 five, pointers. Five million. He said just five, five million. Just five million. Just five million. Ain't about and woke up and put, put 23 million on his arm and his neck for no reason at all. Hey, now, you had, the, you had the label, right? Did you ever think about getting the music again, like helping some artists? Well, you know, um, you know, I've been working, you know, a lot of tours, a lot of huge tours. Oh, okay. For years. You guys never seen my name on none, a lot of tours, but I was behind a lot of major, major tours. Well, good for you, man. That was done. A lot of major artists. That's where Al Heyman came from, right? I, I think I think I think Floyd for uh, for the most part, Floyd's probably one of the most misunderstood boxers and uh and businessmen out there. Uh, a lot of people think of him as uh uh, the, the the 411 on him is like, he's a big mouth guy, this and this and that, a lot of flash. You know, it's, it's, by the way, as a father, it's hard for me because he, you know, he's all about, obviously in the, in the, in the, he owns a couple of strip clubs, I think. He owns a couple of strip clubs, but at the same time too, he has daughters. Listen, you know, uh, Floyd, it's his business. I'm not here to judge. I'm just stating a fact. He owns strip clubs, but at the same time he has daughters. It's an interesting conversation he must have with his family when it comes to that. I don't know, but uh, maybe one of these days I'll ask yeah, him. You know, um, Al is like, my, you know, the second father. Mm-hmm. Tycoon, very shrewd businessman. Um, power team, power team. Whatever we want, we can do. There's none that I ever wanted that I didn't get. What a, what a mindset that is, man. There's nothing that I never wanted that I couldn't get. Imagine having a life that way, that whatever you want, you can get. What does it take to get anything that you want in your life? What does it take for you to say, you know what? I want to make $100,000 a year. I want to be debt free. I want to go on this trip without going to debt. I want to go on... This vacation, I want to retire my parents. I want to retire myself. I want to retire my spouse. That anything you put your mind to, you can get. What's so? What's the gap? What's the difference? I like to see what uh, Floyd here has to say about this power team because maybe it's something that you can build in your life. I dreamed it. I wrote it down. I believed it. I surrounded myself with the right people. Here it is. But the main thing I wrote is, wrote it down. Surround yourself with the right people. You can't think you know it all. Oh, <laughs> how, how many people have we run across? doing workshops across America, mentoring the thousands of people that we're mentoring directly and indirectly. And a lot of people think they know how to do it better. They think they can take a shortcut. They think they can create a hack. There's no hack by thinking that my cup is full because then nobody can help you. You can't even help yourself if you think you know everything. You know, Ray Dalio says something very powerful in his book called Principles. He says, I walk into, if you guys don't know who Ray Dalio is, he's kind of like the, uh, the Steve Jobs of the hedge fund world. Anyway, Ray Dalio says, I still walk into every boardroom thinking that I don't know anything. Like, I want to prove, I'm, I'm, prove me right because I want to walk in and prove myself wrong, but prove me right that my position or my decision is, is right because I'm thinking that I'm wrong. And so oftentimes people... Um, think that way earlier in their life. That's the way I thought in my teens and 20s and 30s that I knew everything, man. I knew everything. I could do better than everybody else. But here's a benefit. The, the way society is rigged today is that society gives the shot, gives a shine and a spotlight to the younger town, the rising up and comer. Actually, it should be the opposite. Who should be honored, in my opinion, and I want to know what your thoughts on this by putting in the comment section below, is we should be honoring the 50, 60, 70, 80 year olds. Why? Because they lived a life filled of grief, of success, of failures, of setbacks, and still living the talk about it. And we need to learn a lot more from those folks of that age range filled with people that understand technology and the new trends. Imagine what that combination would do, but we don't as a society. However, the people I've surrounded myself with, I might come up and continue to come up, are people older and wiser than me, a lot years older than myself because I want to learn from their mistakes. I surround myself with people that they got it right here. You have to have it right here. Have to. One of the brothers I've seen you with through my time in jail, we used to always watch you on TV. This is one brother that I don't give a fuck where you at. He always did with you. He ready to go down. This mother, he ready to do whatever. He's a bald head brother that wear the, uh, he wear like, he always got frames on. Bald head brother. He always with you. So, Wallow's obviously been studying Floyd. He's studying his moves, 
He's studying the people around him. He's not necessarily putting names to the people yet because he doesn't know, but that's why he's asking an interview, power of doing an interview. But uh, while I was obviously studying Floyd's game, and if you know his story, he was in jail for a large part of his life. He had a lot of time to study, and now that he's got his freedom, he wants to make sure he does right by the rest of his life based on some of the promises he made to himself while locked up. Leonard Ellaby. He got, he got a very interesting story. Actually, he's from Washington, D.C. Okay. And I wonder how they connected. He left a six figure, a six figure paying job just to get with me in the beginning. This at the beginning of my career. Yeah. Wow. Think about this real quick. A guy left a six figure job, saw an opportunity to grow with a young boxer, young fighter. Apparently, it's, he must be a working in, I don't know the guy, but apparently this guy must be in a business management, brand management type of position to work with a young athlete young pro boxer like a Floyd because he believed in his story, his vision. And would you do that? Sometimes people don't want to do it. Well, I'll make $100,000. My next move is two fifty. dollars Now, sometimes your next move is humbling yourself, not thinking that you know everything and saying, listen, and let me take a step back because of the people I'm surrounded with because they give me access to things I'd never be exposed to. Sometimes people look too much to the bottom line without understanding context. Very prevalent in my industry because, then, for example, in the insurance industry and the financial services industry, people look at commission levels or salary as a way for me to move from one firm to another. That's not the way to make a move though. The way to make a move is what is the package that's going to be involved, even though I may be paying less on a commission level, but what's my overall compensation package? Because that compensation package could be access and you're part of something greater, massive story that you're a part of, even though the salary may not pay, pay you enough right now. I remember a conversation with uh, LeBron. Uh, LeBron turned down Adidas. They, he turned down Reebok. They were paying him more money. He said, listen, man, I'm a Nike guy. He bought into the brand of Nike. And how has that worked out? And this kid was 18 years old. LeBron, who was 18 years old, was making the decision to sign a shoe deal with Nike versus Reebok and Adidas, even though they were paying him more money. Therefore, the compensation package overall was deeper and brighter and more robust with Nike than it was with the other two opportunities. So, it's interesting here how this guy left a job to work with Floyd. Let's continue. Had a master's degree, in, you know, had a master's degree, six-figure paying job. He left, he left it all in D.C., came. I guess he's seen the same thing that I've seen. He's seen the dream, and he believed. And he made, made millions and millions of dollars with me. Okay, that's, that's it. One step back, plenty steps forward. This is what I call, there's, people think there's an entrepreneur, right? Entrepreneurship is great. Boom. You start your own business. You put up all the capital, the risk, the credit, the reputation. You put it all up. There's some similar aspect to it, which is called the intrapreneur. So some of you may be intrapreneurs. What's an intrapreneur? Like this guy. Who put up all the capital? Who put up all the risk? Floyd did. His name, his reputation, his money. He bought into this guy, but Floyd puts up all the money. But what does an intrapreneur do? Exactly the same thing as an entrepreneur does, but the difference is an entrepreneur has the entrepreneur put up the money, the capital, the risk. The, entre the entrepreneur still goes out there and hustles and grinds and puts his life on the line to make a position or opportunity succeed, just not without the capital investment to do so. And uh, this guy's benefit made millions of dollars in return for doing so. He's the CEO of Mayweather Promotions now. Okay, CEO. okay. Now, how important is team? Because you know, like you said, a lot of people out here. So he went from a six-figure paying job to seeing a vision 25 years ago in a young athlete, and now he becomes a CEO of his of Mayweather Companies. Very profound statement there too, as well, because sometimes people want that success right now. Social media that loots a lot of people's time proximity even worse. If people thought that success was an overnight type of thing, this guy spent many many years of Mayweather not being rich, of course he didn't lose fights, but of him not being rich, not getting the big deals, but eventually over time, he became the multi, multi, multi-millionaire and the CEO of Mayweather Companies. We be thinking a lot of people move and they thinking about the money, so they think I could do it by myself because I don't want to bust it down and establish a team. When I think a team, I think together each achieve more. True. How important is that infrastructure? By the way, man, love building a team. Um, and Floyd's going to answer you in a second, but here's my thought, because that was me for 12 years just trying to be a independent life insurance agent. If you want to go fast, do it yourself. But if you want to go far, 
you got to build a team. Only when I built a team did my business start to exponentially grow. Only when Michael Jordan in Chicago Bulls, when he started playing team ball versus just Michael ball, did he start winning championships. So many of you out there think, oh, I just don't want to worry about other people's problems. But listen, man, if leadership is beyond you, then so is success. If you want to go far, you want to really expand your territory, then it's about you dealing with people. If you don't feel that you need to deal with people, that means you, need, you can't even deal with yourself. Life is about human relationships. Leadership is getting people to do something that they wouldn't have done themselves. So if you want to lead and get the reward for leading because there's money out there, then you got to learn how to deal with people. I think even like people, when you make money, so when I made, if I make 100,000, I put 50,000 up. Good for him. If I make 100 million, I put 50 million up. You always got to put half up. Hold on. So you just got the other 50 million just laying around. This just my, just if I want to have some fun. I mean, just, I mean, because, you know, I work with. I just, How many guys would even feel comfortable with you right now? So, you know, I understand, Matt. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. You know, it's nice for him to say I'm making 100000 but do you know how hard it is for you to make it in a fight world, having to pay your corner men, how you pay your cut men, pay your doctors, pay your medical bills? There's no group health insurance policy in the boxing world. So he's being smart with his money. So sometimes people, they make a little bit of money and they live on their money too soon. They go out there, they buy the cars, they buy the jewelry, they got the house too soon in life without going through a phase of capitalization, which is what Floyd had put himself through by tucking away 50% of his savings. Some of you guys say, I can't even save 5% of my income. I can't even save 10% of my income. Well, listen, you'll always live paycheck to paycheck if you're unwilling to tuck money away. Oh, wait, it's a habit. If you're unwilling to do it with the small, what makes you think you're gonna do it with the big? So every dollar that you got coming, this is basic financial literacy 101. Gotta pay yourself first. You gotta tuck that money away first. So therefore you can capitalize and or use that money for future opportunities or make sure that if you go through emergencies, imagine there's a phase in his life where he couldn't go back to fighting. If he couldn't fight to make the money, how would Floyd make ends meet? He'd go through a lot of stress. I'm sure he did. And that's why he's speaking with the way he's speaking right now. And by the way, just to let you know, my other views of Floyd's interviews in the past, cocky guy, big mouth, it's a much different guy that I see in this interview than those other venues. Maybe it was a persona they was playing up into. Uh, but to see the guy right now, the businessman Floyd Mayweather, the retired Floyd Mayweather, I see a, a guy making some wise moves. I, I got guys I work with every day. You know, just yesterday I made 10 million. <laughs> but. <laughs> Look at Gilly. <laughs> but, but once you make, once you make so much money. Look wholesome. <laughs> but see, Gilly, that's the wrong, that's the wrong answer. That's the wrong question. Let me hold some. No, what you need to be asking him, Gilly, is teach you the damn game. See, everybody's like, let me get some, let me borrow from you. No, no, what you need to do is, hey, Floyd, what did you do to make $10 million? That's the real answer. Come on, Gilly. Million dollars worth of game. You got to show them million dollars worth of game. The game is learning other people's moves, not holding someone else's bag. Yeah, just yesterday, I made $10 million, like that shit wasn't nothing. <laughs> but once you make so much money and you didn't already had everything, there's really nothing else you can buy. So you, you, you believe in making everybody else around you you want to push them to be great. You want to push them to be successful. Yep. So that's what I do. I push everybody around me to be great. Even like my security team, I say, listen, while y'all working with me, y'all built your own security team on the side. Right. That y'all got working. Right. It's freaking smart, man. How many of you right now are working for a boss, a company, a corporation, where they're not allowing to have your own side gig? And why not? You can't have any outside interest. Well, Matt, you don't understand. It's a conflict of interest. Conflict of interest to who? Between you and your boss, who's the most important part of that variable in that equation? It's you, not your employer. Well, Matt, the boss pays me my paycheck. Do you actually hear yourself? Well, Matt, my boss pays my bills. My boss pays my paycheck. Really? You allowed yourself to submit to a boss? And now, it might be a temporary thing, but long-term, who's going to be the boss? It's you, not your boss. And if you don't have a boss that empowers you to be great, then man, you got a boss that's empowered you to give up on your dreams, to give up on your goals for the exchange of a salary. Is that the type of life you want to live? And yet you want to raise kids. You can be anything, Poppy. You can do anything. Mommy, you can be anything. Be what you want to be. Yeah, but mom and dad, they're not living to be anything themselves. You 
mom and dad turned off the dream machine. You, grandma, grandpa, turned off the dream machine. You cannot expect you to teach the next generation, say, hey, go out and live your dreams and fly, baby, fly, unless you're flying. Kids don't listen to what you say. They watch and do what you do. Doing other venues and making money. Yeah. I believe in making everybody around me great. Because because if I just, every time I make a lot of money, just give you a lot of money, and you don't got no ambitions and you ain't got no drive, all I'm doing is crippling you. Right. Yep. I'm hurting you. Right. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. And that goes out to people out there to think that answer to your problems is the government giving you more money, rich people giving you more money, people are luckier than you giving you more money. No. The way you go about life is to you go out there and get it done. I'm reminded of a proverb. It goes like this. Proverbs 12, verse 24. The hand of the diligent will rule while the slothful will be put to forced labor. So what do you want to do, man, in your life? Do you want to rule or do you want to be submitting to somebody else and you have to do it and you don't want to do it? And guess what that causes in your life? Stress. If you go out there and say, listen, I want to be diligent. I want to go out there and chase my dreams. I want to put risk out there, risk my time, money, and capital. Guess what happens? You risk putting pressure on yourself. And if you say it publicly, guess what you have now? The best part of peer pressure, which is the positive side of peer, peer pressure. You see, people always talk about the negative side of peer pressure, which, oh, don't do, don't, your friends make you do drugs, alcohol make you spend your money. But they also, the opposite side of positive peer pressure is what? They make you do things and they hold you accountable to the things that you publicly say and declare. That being said, guys, I'll know what your thoughts, your questions are. Um, I got a different perspective here on Floyd money, Mayweather. What are your thoughts, your comments? You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Please put it in the comment section below. Before I let you go, please check out these other two reaction videos here of what Waka Flocka had to say about life insurance and uh, what Master P had to say about taking a $10,000 proceed and uh, flipping that into a hip hop mogul that he is today. So that being said, guys, if you've been watching this and you think that this video has provided some value to you, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our videos, if you've done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and hitting notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next video. That being said, I'm your money smart guy from Dallas, Texas, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to live smart, and be money smart today.